Hello everyone, welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. Now I do want to preface today's episode by warning all of you guys, today's episode, quite a few stories are based all around speculation and rumors out there, and I, I know in the past I've covered a lot of speculation and rumor stories in CSK News, but this episode especially I do want you guys to know is based a lot about rumors out there and about stuff that's not actually fully confirmed, but could possibly happen in the future of CSGO. Now the first story, probably most importantly, and also in rumors out there, will be all about Mixwell and where he could potentially go sometime soon, and potentially before the Major, although... Uh, based off rumors, it really won't matter where he goes. It currently seems no team going to the major right now has interest, or uh, vice versa, he has no interest in actually joining a team before the major itself. He's actually voiced time and time again his decision to actually not join a North American team. He only has a few limited options who he could actually join before the major for North American teams who are going to the major, that being Rogue, Complexity, Liquid, and Cloud9. Yeah, I guess you could uh, say MIBR, although their roster pretty much finalized. He's pretty much shut out all North American offers for the time being, and on top of that, he even shut down an offer to join North, which is speculated because, of course, they won DreamHack Valencia together, and that kind of goes to tie in the entire story today as the big question, where is Mixwell going to go if he shuts down North American offers? He doesn't want to go with a team like North, who is even probably a better offer than, than many North American teams can actually offer him right now. It really kind of makes you question why he would join this Movistar roster with former Movistar player Alex, as well as uh, we also have Lowell in there, Lowell formerly of Mouse, of Mouse Sports, as well as that Tempo Storm roster for a short period of time. Uh, not really a sufficient roster on screen for all of you, a roster that you would think that Mixwell well would join, although the main big difference here, people why this rumor is actually being fed, is of course Movistar is a Spanish organization. Now, like I said previously, they've been lingering around CSGO for quite some time, never really amounted to much so in terms of results or even having a, a really, uh, I guess you could say tier one or even a, a tier two roster. And so if Mixwell were to join and of course had that Spanish pride in him, like we saw with MIBR and of course SK Gaming and Tempo Storm and LG, the real pride in Brazilian scene, if they were to actually make a, a kind of a name for themselves here, you can see why that would be an up more utmost importance to the guy and why maybe he would consider joining these guys even though they probably can't afford to pay him what other teams would. So I think it's highly unlikely. You guys can leave a comment down below what you guys think about this but I can almost pretty much confirm in my own opinion I don't think it would happen but again who knows where Movistar would actually get the money to afford these kind of guys. Who knows what other sponsors they might land uh, with signing this entire Spanish roster. Who knows if Mixwell would take a pay cut. It's only rumors right now and also to kind of get the rumors out of the way the most extreme rumors as well. We did have Apex last night following not only Alex Mueller the marketing director for SK Gaming. If you guys remember it was actually Alex Mueller, the guy he, Apex just followed. He was involved with the whole poaching scandal with the, the former LG roster way, way back in the day. The poaching scandal, I say with fingers because we all eventually you know, know, the, know the outcome of that story and it was kind of on those guys to actually, of course they signed multiple contracts at the same time so yeah, I guess it was the benefit to Alex to that he finally landed those guys to the SK roster and now of course with SK Gaming's uh, vacated roster spot, we don't really know who they're going to sign and so it could be maybe some XG2 players like MBK or like Apex who, I know, it's the only evidence right now is they followed him on Twitter, but alongside that, it kind of brings out some other questions. If SK Gaming seemingly have now backed off the now Tem Como roster, it was actually rumored many months ago that, of course, once the current SK, or the previous SK Gaming roster would go to MIBR, they would then sign the now Tem Como roster with KNG and all those guys who were performing decently well at the time, but given the last three to four months of now Tem Como's results, especially the biggest one, them failing to make the major qualifier, it seems financially not incentivized at all for SK Gaming to sign those guys, and they could actually sign someone else instead. Now, why they would actually go out and pay the big buyout for Apex or MBK is beyond me, but even more so, it kind of brings into the question, what about the left out or the ex-envious roster to be signed to SK Gaming? Now, that kind of brings into our next story as well. Just keep those questions in mind, guys, as to who SK Gaming could sign in the future, who Alex Mueller and those guys want to sign. They really have a lot of options out there currently as, I guess you could say, partial rosters, free agents here and there, but the only real full roster, I guess you guys can comment down below other full rosters out there. One definitely to keep in mind, though, is the left out roster or the ex-envious roster, you know, Kiyoshi. Shima, Scream, Sixer, those guys going to be playing at the major or at least at the minor for now trying to qualify for the major qualifier as given to you by the tweet on screen for Scream. As of right now, that team will go forward as left out and they will actually be left out at any signing for an organization and they'll be going to the minor to actually compete to go to the major qualifier with no organization yet to sign them. And so I, I know I've been saying a lot so far throughout this episode, but the big question is if they do make the major qualifier, will an organization like SK Gaming try and sneak in very fast and sign them before they go to the major? Uh, again, uh, people keep in mind as well, when it comes to the major, the only real benefit for an organization to sign these guys would be sponsorship money. Because when it comes to the major, the prize pool money, the sticker money, generally all goes to the players. The organization would not benefit from that. So the only reason an organization would actually sign these guys, the ex-Envious roster, if they make the major qualifier, is just for publicity. And which we all know Envious is, is keen on doing very much about, I guess... 
I shouldn't have said that. I'll hint at a story in the future about Envious and their marketing strategies. And also huge shout out to CSGO IRL Knives. This episode and hopefully an episode in the future is going to be brought to you by them. They actually sent me some CSGO knives. Very funnily though, they sent them to me and my, my parents actually got the knives and they sent them to me when I was actually in Chicago for my, with my sister for my birthday. And if you guys know, I actually flew to Chicago so I could not come back with the knives and that's why the lame recording is on screen for all of you. I left those knives with my sister in Chicago. So anyway, thanks to CSGO IRL Knives. If you guys use code Jake Lucky, Jake Lucky down below, you get 10% off your order. And that was just really funny. My sister now has a bunch of CSGO knives, which I'm sure, I hope she never uses because they were super cool, but super sharp. And finally, for all of you guys concerned about players out there who went to WESG 2017, technically they call it a year behind. So it was actually WESG 2017, but it actually occurred throughout 2018. So a very recent uh, big prize pool for WESG, uh, the big event over there. And of course, the top 16 teams on screen who actually came away from that tournament with prize winnings. Apparently of those 16 teams, only about half of them have been paid out and we finally have WESG posting their half of the story as to why they have not paid these players out. Now also to preface as well, in the past with the previous WESG event, these players had the same result. It was actually taking I believe seven to eight months was the reported time of WESG 2016 to pay out their all their payments and prize pools to all the winners back in 2017 if that makes sense. These guys are notorious for having big delays over there. Now I will get the benefit of the doubt and it comes to of course uh, what they said. The big number one ruling was of course the Chinese Bureau. They have to approve all the payments for the top winners or the teams out there who came away with $40,000 or more in prize pool winnings. And on top of that, it was actually a lot of uh, incremental results and incremental problems over there about players and teams not signing the correct forms. Now, that's what they allegedly said. Either way, they seem to have big delays every single year for WESG. But nonetheless, guys, they have posted about it. And of course, we have people like C's talking about this as well, kind of bringing some notion to this and hopefully some movement as well as those players do slowly get paid out for WESG. Now, I don't think it's going to stop anyone from actually playing WESG in the future. It's a pretty big payout and a pretty, I guess you could say, easy tournament for those tier one teams out there. But again, if they're going to promise prize pools, they need to have some kind of delegation as to when they're going to give those prizes out. Now, also, though, bouncing off that, guys, after talking to Wardell, I mentioned in today, uh, actually yesterday's episode as well, we did have Wardell apparently on his alt account, which he uses as his main account, getting Overwatch banned a couple days ago. I was actually talking to him back and forth on Twitter. He really had no idea as to why he was Overwatch banned. As of right now, at the point of me recording this, he has yet to hear back from Valve about this, but he sticks to the words. He is not a cheater, although he did actually tell me he'd been hitting some suspicious clips lately, shooting through smokes and kind of just, uh, you know, f firing randomly through smokes as well. And to give you guys kind of an instance, he actually played in the Zotac Cup, and here were some similar shots there that he was hitting also in matchmaking, which he thinks might have led to his Overwatch ban. Now, I'm going to believe this guy for now. I don't think Wardell is cheating whatsoever. He's been on Ghost Gaming for several months now, and I don't think he's a cheater. But here is a clip he hit at Zotac Cup, which might have made people think that he was actually cheating. The smoke themselves, but in pushing in, this gets... What? Oh, Wardell with the drop! Drop shot. Knack though there for the trade, but no, Wardell's gonna be able to pick up another one. One more remaining. He'll jump onto the defuse. He's not seen Knack creeping back out just yet. But Knack oh, hesitating, what? and Wardell gets the shot again. A massive clutch from Wardell. And I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I think I'm taking this CSGO news video stuff. Like, I don't know where I'm taking it direction wise. I just really like talking to you guys, and I appreciate all the comments you guys have been leaving. And so I feel like eventually I can actually go off on rants about this kind of stuff. Whenever I talk about ghost gaming, I immediately feel so sad. I don't, I'm really kind of a little update, life update wise, as to where some of these players are in terms of the teams we never hear about like Ghost Gaming which Wardell does play for and that kind of reminded me out of nowhere where Steel has been. If you guys don't know Steel of course the former I, I by Power IGL back in the days which apparently has not yet been forgiven for some odd reason this guy is still not allowed at the majors and it's just very sad to see because ever since he joined that torqued roster throughout ESCA Mountain Dew League he climbed that team to the top ranks of Mountain Dew League. They almost just borderline did not qualify for ESL Pro League and again that team he kind of just led them uh, out of nowhere to being a pretty sufficient North American team and then of course we had the X-Torx roster that was AZK and Swag kind of branching off and that trio a uh, Steel included was actually signed to the Ghost Gaming roster and it was just very sad to see if you guys remember it was uh, for the North American minor it was actually Ghost Gaming who cannot compete with Steel on that roster and just before then and even recent results wise with Steel back in that roster they actually replaced him for the minor with James IRL for the IGL role but before that and even recent results of the Zotac Cup they came away with a victory this is certainly a team with Steel 
Steele in the lineup as the IGL. This is a team that definitely could have qualified for the major, given the fact that if Steele was not banned from major events, I do not doubt at all this team could have at least been a top four, if not a top two, and gone to the major qualifier in place of complexity or in place of Rogue. And that's just the one thing I hope to see in the future. Now, I know we may never hear from Valve again about this whole instance, but it just kind of depresses me. It makes me sad that throwing a match over two years ago, three years ago, can hold players back like this. And just seeing him tweet out things like this as well just makes you feel like he's had such strong mental fortitude so long. And I really want to know in the comment section down below or just in the future, let me know, what do you guys think about these match throwers? Is it time to unban them? I know many months ago we actually had a response from Valve about this where they finally said, yes, they can play ESL events, other events, but the majors, those are going to be certified. They cannot play ever again, at least for the prolonged future. What do you guys think? I know a lot of the majority of community out there said they should be unbanned, but what do you really think? Should they finally be unbanned? Because I want to see Steel back in the major. Everyone out there says, oh, bring back swag. I want to see him. I want to see Steel. Whew, sorry about that, guys. I, I just really got into that last segment there. But to end off today's episode of Cisco News, of course, I do need to talk about the most recent rise of the Operation Hydra case. I'm going to link a great video down below for all of you by a great CSGO YouTuber who I've been watching for quite some time. He does great market analysis and, of course, Steam market analysis as well when it comes to prices of random skins out there, especially sticker analysis. A, a long major time, you guys need to follow this guy. His name is TDM Jesus. He does a great job analyzing, of course, this rise of the Operation Hydra case. Now, ever since it did go away back in November, when I first read that, and of course, looking up this information, I, I totally forgot the operation was nearly eight, eight, nine months ago, which is crazy to think how long ago it actually was. And even then, we're at our longest gap almost ever without even seeing a single case from Valve themselves. So I, I guess we could say speculation wise in the next month or so, we should have a new case and only cross your fingers. I doubt it's going to be an operation, but although with Panorama UI, a new operation would be greatly timed. Anyway, though, of course, the most recent rise of the Operation Hydra case, it has been discontinued and, and currently it ranks as the fifth rarest case inside this game of CSGO. And uh, of course, that being number wise, how many are on the market available right now? You have typical cases with over millions and at least hundreds of thousands available. This one just below for, uh, 13 to 1500 cases available and that is why the recent price rise has actually given it the average price just shy of about four dollars currently now tdm jesus goes on to analyze it could go up in the future and is actually most likely projected to go up in the future although most importantly though the skins inside them are not continuing to raise in price the reason why though is it's actually the first operation case the first discontinued case no longer to be dropped in game that actually has very expensive gloves inside of it so for potential investors out there and all of you guys watching the video i would not really recommend you guys actually buy into them right now maybe wait till the next case drop or maybe the next operation case as well to come out and then maybe invest as of right now i'll be staying away from these but that's to explain the recent price rise of the operation hydra case and why it's so ridiculously priced and it shouldn't be that way as always guys hope you all enjoyed i'm gonna take tomorrow off from csk news to work on some other videos to surprise you guys maybe later in the week i hope you guys all enjoyed as always my name is jake like you and i'll see y'all next time okay well bye